latest on September 20th around the wide world of tropics. Here's your tropical weather bulletin. A major flooding disaster has occurred today from the remnants of Tropical Storm Imelda. Elsewhere around the tropical regions there are six cyclones active and two hurricane strength storms at this time and a few near that intensity too. Very active in the tropics, day 111 of the Atlantic hurricane season. Hurricanes Humberto and Jerry are both active as well apart from that uh, flood issue in Texas and Louisiana. Day 128 in the Eastern Pacific, Lorena triggers more hurricane warnings in Mexico. Tropical Storm Tapa is south of the Ryukyu Islands at this point and is a very broad system and in the Southern Hemisphere no storms are active, it is all quiet here. So let's take a look then at Tropical Storm Lorena, which is the main feature tonight. 70 mile per hour winds, pressure 994 millibars just off the coast of Mexico. Could be upgraded to a hurricane again very soon indeed. Hurricane warnings are in effect for the Baja California Peninsula, 21.2 north, 107.2 west, 645 miles from Mazatlan. Over the next few days, we expect that this system could strike the tip of the Baja California Peninsula as a hurricane and then move up the coast, sweeping through the western coast by the looks of things as we get into the early part of next week and weakening to a depression just offshore, um, getting up towards the northern part of that peninsula. Hurricane Jerry has winds of 90 miles per hour and a pressure of 982 millibars at this point, not far from the Lesser Antilles, 348 miles from Guadeloupe, 17.9 uh, north, 56.2 degrees west. We expect that Jerry will move past those islands without drawing too close, thankfully. Tropical Storm Watch is still in effect for a lot of those islands. And over the next few days, we expect it will reach Category 2 status, drift off towards the northwest, should avoid the Bahamas, here's hoping, and then potentially make a run for Bermuda. That's another hurricane possible for Bermuda next week. And Tropical Storm Tapa looks like this, 45 miles per hour, pressure 990 millibars, well to the south of the Ryukyu Islands, but its large wind field means that Tropical Storm Force winds may already be occurring on some of those islands. 205 miles from Miyakajima, 22.6 north, 127.7 degrees east. Over the next few days on this one, uh, you can see it there advancing towards the north, passing through those islands, gale force winds expected, and then uh, moving up towards the Japan, uh, the southernmost islands of the main islands of Japan and South Korea. Rainfall totals in South Korea could reach 350 millimeters from that storm as well. Wind shear graphics for Jerry at this point looking like this, high wind shear to its north, low wind shears to its south, so it's riding that fine line at the minute, about 20 knots of wind shear above the storm right now. So it's marginal, uh, that will continue on, on its trajectory at this point over the next day or two, so if we do see more strengthening it will most likely be slow, um, can't completely rule out more intensification beyond category 2, but it's not most, the most likely scenario so far. This is the look at Tapo as well. Wind shear amounts starting to drop in the region as well for this storm too. So really the biggest obstacle for Tapa will be itself. It already appears to have multiple vortices near the center um, and it will be probably be a slow intensification phase. Could still reach typhoon status though. Wide shot of the North Atlantic, Umberto way, way to the north just off the map now. Another disturbance near Hispaniola at this point as well. And to the east we're still looking out at Africa for potential developments later on down the line. National Hurricane Center have two areas of interest east of Jerry in the next five days. This is the Gulf of Mexico showing the tremendous um, thunderstorms that are still bubbling up over the southern part of Texas where over 30 inches of rain have fallen today. The eastern Pacific looks like this. Two storms almost look merged into one there. Lorena along the coast of Mexico, Mario to its southwest, a storm in its own right, and Kiko still going on as well, with more convection blowing up today in that storm too. National Hurricane Center still give at least another five days to live. The Western Pacific looks like this. 
um, so a few disturbances, well just the one really, 90W which is near the Mariana Islands at this point and obviously you can see Tapar, look how large the influence is from Tapar, you can see its extent forming all the way from Vietnam to, J to the southeastern part of Japan, so that is a massive area of its influence, the storm itself extending out about 400 miles. Um, in diameter. The Australia and South Pacific region is starting to get a little bit more active here as well but nothing of any real organization. The Indian Ocean is fairly quiet but you can see Invest 96A uh, lingering along the western coast of India some models uh, hinting at development of that system in the Arabian Sea. Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific, very warm, 30 degrees plus along the coast of Mexico, 31 even where Lorena is, so very feasible that it could become a hurricane again in the next day, and it will still have opportunities after that. Um, where Jerry is entering warmer waters there as well, so that will really start to go in its favour, so we could see some more intensification. The Indian Ocean, very warm along the Bangladesh coast really, further south it's a bit cooler. And in the Western Pacific, it's a bit hit and miss, uh, Tabat is doing another number on the sea surface temperatures in the West Pacific, that will be reducing those SSTs quite a bit. Here is some imagery of Tropical Storm Lorena from the NOAA floaters, goes 17 I think this one is, um, and you can see how it's been progressing throughout the day today. Um, not the most organised system you'll ever see, but banding from the storm and cirrus clouds starting to move over the Baja California Peninsula and uh, parts of that area could receive hurricane force winds. Hurricane Jerry looking like this, a rather small system, rather bare on the west hand, on the left hand side, or to its west that is, um, and those islands not really seeing many effects from the storm so far. Hopefully it stays that way for quite some time, um, but it will probably get clipped by a little bit of rainfall that could dump two inches or so. Tropical Storm Tapa looking like this. Most of its convection displaced to the south. We don't have any visibles yet on this, um, but the northern side looking very bare as well as we look towards the uh, Ryukyu Islands. But those wind fields, gale force winds are extending out up to 200 miles in all directions. So here we are then, September 20th, a very busy day, it has been for about two days now, day 263 of the year, 64 storms now on the charts. Uh, the next name in the Atlantic is Karen. In the Eastern Pacific, we're looking out for Nada, and in the Central Pacific, Ima is the next name on the list. In the Western Pacific, the next name here is Mithag, and in the North Indian Ocean on list 8, we're looking out for Hika. You can find Force 13's outlets, the website force13.com with the latest, our YouTube page, search Force 13 all in text and subscribe if you haven't so far, and you can find us on Facebook and Twitter if you'd like to get in touch on there as well. That's all for now with a whirlwind tropical weather bulletin, we'll be back with another one tomorrow provided that we're not doing storm updates in the meantime. You can also help the project become even better by becoming a patron. You can see more information about all the benefits involved by visiting patreon.com forward slash force 13. With a special thanks to these people for being our most valued patrons this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show force 13's colors wherever you go. You can also find a link to our discord server underneath this video in the description.